Sekul Geo. Now, we have earlier in the year looked at Euclidean geometry. The Euclidean geometry that we looked at before is two unit. The three unit extension is the circle geometry theorems. So if let's uh, just define some terms to begin with. Ah, that's a circle. There you go, that's the first term. A, a radius. That is simply an interval that joins the center to the circumference. Diameter. That is also an interval. It passes through the center but joins two points on the circumference. Chord. That is also an interval joining two points on the circumference but it does not necessarily go through the center. So therefore the diameter is in fact a chord but a very special chord. A secant is a line that simply cuts the circle. So it's like getting the chord and extending it. So it cuts through the circle. And of course a tangent, we know that one quite well. That's one that just touches the circle and doesn't cut through it. And then an arc, which is just a piece of the circumference. Yeah. Now, whilst I've just drawn in one arc there, I've actually drawn two. Because there's the minor arc, and then there's the major arc, would be the larger part. All right, another circle. Sector. That has two radii and an arc as a boundary. And again, I've actually drawn two sectors there, a minor sector and a major sector. The minor sector, the piece of pi, the major sector, I guess, is if you're greedy. Now, a quadrant, that's also a sector, but the angle at the centre is 90 degrees, a quad quarter of the, the circle. Segments. This time it has a chord and an arc as a boundary. And once again, two segments there. There's the minor segment and the major segment. The semicircle is a segment. But it's not a minor or a major because it's exactly half. So that's why we call it the semicircle. But then I suppose we could also say the semicircle is a sector as well. Because it does also have two radii and uh, a piece of the circumference. Okay, circle. Concyclic points. So they're just points that are on the same circle. There we go, those four points are concyclic. A cyclic quadrilateral then is a, a four sided shape, quadrilateral, but all the vertices are concyclic. So the vertices lie on the same circle. So with those four, I could create. A cyclic quadrilateral. Circle. Okay, AB. I'm joining AB up to a point. That's what we call subtending. Right? So when we say we're going to subtend an angle, in this case, I'm assuming that's the centre of the circle, is I'm saying that angle alpha is the angle subtended by the arc AB. And subtended means you get the end points of the arc, so you get two points, and you join it up to a third point. Creates or subtends an angle. You could also say uh, subtended by a chord, but that's not as good. Because a chord, you could go either side of the chord, whereas the arc, I can only go one way. So if I'm talking about the arc, and if I don't say major or minor, we always assume I'm talking about minor arc. So if I say arc AB, there's really only one direction to go. Okay, so the angle subtended. And then, of course, that one would be an angle subtended at the circumference. And we know a theorem about that, but we'll find that one out later. Circle. Two circles. They are called concentric circles. So circles that have the same centre. Circle. Two circles. These are circles that touch internally. But whenever two circles touch, they will share a common tangent at that point where they touch. You could also have two circles that touch externally. And again, they would have a common tangent between the two. All right, 
Let's now have a look at some of our theorems. So we'll start off with the chord or the arc theorems. Often the words are interchangeable because when we talk about a chord or an arc, what we're really interested in is the endpoints of the chord or the arc. So they could well be the same two points. Equal chords, remember, will cut off equal arcs on, in a circle. A perpendicular drawn to a chord from the centre of the circle bisects the chord. And the perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the centre. Right. Let's have a look at that situation. There it is. So if I had that situation where I know that OB is perpendicular to OX, then I would be able to say, ah, well therefore I know AX is equal to BX because the perpendicular from the centre will bisect the chord. It would also be true that the arc A, whatever letter I call that one there, would equal B. Because, again, the, as set, the perpendicular from the centre bisects that arc as well. We're going to prove they are indeed equal. And most of these uh, use congruent triangles to do it. So with this one, <coughs> I'm going to uh, draw in a couple of sides, OA and OB, and I'll create a couple of triangles. So we know AXO and BXO are both 90. That's given to us. Uh, OA and, and BO are both radii. And OX is common in both, so I've got right angle hypotenuse side, they are indeed congruent. So if they are congruent, I can now say, oh well, yep, they're matching sides in congruent triangles. So that proves that little proof. The converse, or the reverse of that one, the line from the centre of a circle to the midpoint of the chord at right angles. So what do we mean? In this time, what I know is that OX bisects AB, so it's like the reverse situation. First one we had is we knew they were perpendicular and we said, therefore they bisect. This one's saying, hey, I know they bisect, therefore they're perpendicular. So I can say OX is perpendicular to AB. Line joining the centre to the midpoint will be perpendicular to the chord. And again, I can prove that very easily using congruent triangles. Again, I'll join in like I did last time, AO and BO. But this time it's going to be side, side, side because AX equals BX. That's the given information this time. Equal radii, common side, 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 side. Okay, so matching angles in congruent triangles. Technically, that just shows they're equal, but we want to show they're 90 degrees. So if I have two equal angles, they add together to give 180 because they're on a straight line. Therefore, they both end up being 90 degrees. Equal chords of a circle are the same distance from the centre and will subtend equal angles at the centre. Okay. So there's the reasoning I would use if I was going to use those particular theorems. Let's prove them. So I've got uh, two chords there. What do I know? I know that AB is the same length as CD, so I've got equal chords. And OX is perpendicular to OY. I want to show they are equidistant, or OX is equal to OY. So let's prove it. Again, drawing a couple of radii, create some triangles. So AB is equal to CD, that was given to us. Now AX is equal to half AB, because perpendicular from the centre, bisects the chord. So therefore AX is equal to CY. I was given they're both right angles. And OA and OC are both radii. So I've got right angle hypotenuse side. So therefore OX is equal to OY. So that's the first one. Equal chords, equidistance from the centre. The second one, let's show they subtend the same angle at the centre. So again, we know those chords are equal in length. This one's a lot easier because I can just go side, side, side with this one because I've got AB is equal to CD, that was given to us. All the other sides are radii, so they're all equal to each other. So side, 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 AOB equals COD, matching angles in congruent triangles. Okay. So 9A, we've got some questions there using the different angle and chord theorems.